Welcome back. I'm Regina Montgomery, the Member Relations Coordinator with the Chamber of Commerce. In this show, we have been speaking about how important it is to keep our do dollars right here local in Dufferin County and the spin-off effects that it has for our businesses and, and obviously for our community and our neighbours. Um, right now, we're being joined by Rodney Huff, who is the uh, Orangeville BIA Chair. So thank you very much for joining us today, You're Rodney. most welcome. Love to be here. So obviously, as the Chair of the BIA, you have sort of a pulse on what goes on downtown. Um, can you just share with us some of the some of the things you've heard, maybe some of the successes, some of the challenges? I think the challenges that we have are within the small business owners themselves. We're really trying to portray that we can be that much better as small business owners. So first we have to buy into that we've got more to offer, mm -hmm. our unique selling proposition. And that's been our uh, real push for the past four years is trying to get us to believe in who we are and we are great when we compare ourselves to other downtowns. And you have a lot of interesting shops downtown. I mean, there's a, a huge diversity down there. Absolutely. We have some brilliant business owners downtown. We've got some great women business owners, men business owners, licensed professionals, professionals, retail, great restaurants. It's a perfect mix. Now talk a little bit about this collaboration of the Live Here, Buy Here campaign with the Chamber, with the other municipalities, with Dufferin Dot Bills and the heads of he Hills of Headwaters Tourism. <laughs> bit yeah. of a tongue twister there. Talk a little bit about that and why that's important. Well, I think collaboration overall, that's how small business owners get through. We don't have big boards and, and backgrounds of people that we can go to. So if we're going to stand on the shoulder of giants, we need to get together. One and one is 11. So when we get groups like this together and we get people that are small business orientated, it's going to, it, the effect is going to be brilliance will come out of it. And that's what's happening. What are so. some of the things you're hearing then from the businesses with the campaign? Uh, from them themselves, I think at the beginning we're hearing that it's working, it's not as great as what we think it should be, but again it's got to come back to what do we do that's different than the big box stores. And what it comes down to is <coughs> price to price it's going to be hard for us to compete with the big box stores on price to price, but when you add service into it, we can be much further ahead than, than the next. So. so when I was uh, doing some research about this, I found a couple of key points, and we've touched on them about, you know, um, shop local um, or live here, buy here. It keeps dollars locally in our economy, and we've touched on that. Um, it creates new and it retains existing jobs. Um, it unifies us as a neighborhood. It makes us stronger as a community, um, and it's convenient and socially responsible to do it, obviously. Um, and then the other thing is more business equals more choice equals more selection. So just talk a little bit on some of those key points. Yeah, I think that from a, a downtown, we're trying to create that community feel. And then if we've got a really good downtown, it spreads out to the rest of the community. And I always look at the downtown as our DNA, that if we can't keep that live, if we can't keep that going, which is exactly what the BIAs do. Right. And now we're trying to take just that energy that we've had in and try to involve the bigger picture all of Orangeville and our events do that just that we're we're inviting everybody in from out of the area into the downtown um, when we can shift that we are as equal or as good as our competitors and we know exactly what it is that we're doing we can get better at what we provide and service it. and uh, the next step is uh, is heading to uh, to great things so so let's take a look now at one of the businesses downtown um, uh, Dragonfly Arts on Broadway. She's got a really interesting type business that really looks at that live here, buy here um, campaign. Absolutely. Let's take a look. It was 10 years ago now, and a friend owns the building, and she wanted to do something nice for Orangeville. And she said maybe the artists could use a boost because there's a vibrant um, arts community in this area, all around Dufferin and etc. So. We started this to help the arts community and let um, artists have a place to show their work in all forms, the pottery, glass blowing, um, wood turning, and of course painting. So that's how it got started. So when people come in, I want them to find unique pieces of art, um, whether it's a functional piece of pottery or a beautiful glass vase that's going to sit on a shelf. Um, I want them to appreciate what, um, what they're looking at and what they um, can buy. 
and I want them to come in and, and witness how it's made. So they can come into the studios and watch one of the artists creating a piece of work. Maybe it's um, a painting or we have a jeweler now and we have some um, lampwork beads. So it's pretty exciting to watch lampwork beads growing in the flame because it's made with a flame. We melt glass, wrap it around and um, create the beads that we then turn into jewelry. I was delighted when um, we started, when the chamber started the Shop Local uh, initiative because it's always been a passion of mine. I think that uh, we need to support our own communities and why travel, um, wasting gas, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. So um, I was really pleased. It fits right into with to my, it fits right into my uh, philosophy and. Um, I try to eat local, I try to shop local, and uh, when you're shopping local here, you're shopping local artists as well, which is really exciting. I have um, a lot of people from outside of this immediate area, some artists from Toronto, um, perhaps uh, near Hamilton, this sort of thing, but still Ontario, most of it, the majority of it. So the way um, Dragonfly Arts on Broadway is run is not like a co-op. It's, um, you just submit your artwork to us, we jury um, it in. We're looking for artists in a mid-career situation. So they've got some experience selling their work. Not to say that I haven't tried out some students and uh, given them an opportunity to show their work, uh, but they submit several pieces of their work. It's all outlined in the dra um, dragonflyarts.ca website. And, uh, but it's a pretty easy process. When I started Dragonfly Arts on Broadway, I was, uh, I was an artist and uh, not a businessman. But um, it, so it's been a challenge that way, but I've got lots of support in that. So I've got a bookkeeper and things like that. Um, some of the challenges now, uh, when we first started, we used to have to approach artists and say, will you give us your work? and they would have to trust us with their precious work. Um, now, I find um, more, more and more people are asking to be a part of Dragonfly Arts on Broadway, so it's pretty, it's pretty uh, nice that way. Uh, there are probably over 200 artists showing with us at any one time, so every month I have to, most of the work is done on consignment, um, which means that the artists will bring work in and then it gets paid after it's sold. So at the end of the month, I tally it all up and send out checks to, uh, to um, all the artists. And that's actually one of my favorite parts, sending the checks to the artists, because I know that um, without Dragonfly, they may not have had that sale. Um, it's interesting, Dragonfly um, symbolizes a rebirth. Um, it's different things for different people, but it, it's often along that line. And Martha and I had both had our daughters move away from home. So we were going through a rebirth, and that may have been um, subconsciously part of what we were doing, naming it Dragonfly. So another business uh, that really has embraced the live here, buy here, I mean her artists being local and providing local products in her store. And I think she just celebrated 10 years in business, 10 years on Broadway. She did. We've got uh, quite a few businesses that have been around for a decade or longer. We've got uh, Kitchen to Tables, 15 years. Uh, Corston Jewelers is a 100-year-old jewelry store. Wow. It's been a family owned since 1960. Uh, when you look at what we've had happen, and that's the news that we've got to put out there, that we're not spreading, I mean, as Canadians, we don't really want to stand up and pound our own chest. Yeah, but if true. we don't do that, then this momentum of this stay here, buy here, keep local won't work. We've got to be more proud about what we're doing. We've got to be more vocal about what we're doing. For Joan to do that and to stand up and do that probably took a lot. But right. we need to do that over and over and over again. We have to tell our story. We've got some brilliant business stories to tell, and we've got to be more proud of it and tell it. So talk a little bit about the future. Um, you know, wh where does this go from here for the town of Orangeville? 
Well, I think we've been doing a lot of big events. So uh, 10 years ago, we transitioned the BIA to get more larger events and bring more volume down. And the indications that we've gotten from the small business owners is they'd like to have more smaller events, more shopping events, more niche events, and, and more shopping sales. So this year, we've got the 150th coming up. Uh, so we want to be able to uh, definitely get through this year. And then our focus, uh, our draft focus over the next few years would be create instead of larger events, many more smaller events. And then what happens is we can get the businesses to start working together, cluster together, and that energy that we're talking when we're collaborating will start happening at that business level. Our belief will go up. I love that uh, she spoke about passion because that's truly small business ownership. So, And then just quickly in 30 seconds, what would you like to see happen when it comes to, um, you know, business? So, you know, if you had a crystal ball, what would you like to yeah. see? Well, that's, <laughs> a, that's a great question and it's a, it's a good one for me. I think since being involved and giving back to the community, I've been with the BIA for, uh, for over 10 years, and mine would be that we have a, uh, an Orangeville that creates small business ownership that doesn't survive, it thrives. And we want people to come out of other communities to come to us and say, what the heck's in your water? How are you <laughs> able to do that? And that would be uh, what gets me up, what makes me work hard. Whenever we finish an event, we're always trying to tweak and find out how we can be better. I have to cut you off. I'm so sorry. We have to go. Thank you very <laughs> this much. It's been a great hour. Thank you so much, Rodney, for taking time out to speak Most with us. Welcome. And remember, the Chamber is a unique business organization that helps businesses prosper and grow. We offer many networking events and opportunities for our members, as well as we have great cost-saving affinity programs that can help you with your business. To find out more about what's happening at the Chamber, be sure to visit our website at www.gdacc.ca. I'd like to thank all my guests for sharing their stories with with us today and I'd also like to take this opportunity to thank Rogers for this um, opportunity to be here with our members. Be sure to check us out on Facebook and Twitter and for more information about events uh, be sure to again visit our website. Until next time I'm Regina Montgomery connecting you to the business community.